welcome to our 2007 Western Sport Fishing video series. Today we've chosen one of our favorite pieces of water come spring. We've got the perfect weather conditions. We've got great hatches coming out today. We saw them as soon as we stepped out of the truck. What do you say, Andy? Yeah. It's May Long weekend and not too often do you actually get a nice day to go fishing on May Long weekend, but <sighs> no. no, it's been bad weather lately, but we chose the perfect day. We got nice sunny warm conditions, a perfect little riffle on the water. And it looks like an excellent coronavid hatch coming off. Oh, I'm getting excited. We're going to go fish some uh, nice spots in about six feet of water. The coronavid should be coming off. We've seen some fish surfacing around there, so it should be a nice afternoon to catch some rainbow trout. Yeah, they like to hang out on that end of the lake by the gravel bed over there. And we've seen some nice fish rolling. We're expecting to catch some fish in the five, six pound range, so. Are we ever? Let's get Are out there. Ever. Let's get out there. Let's go. noticed so far with the coronamids emerging is that they're not on the bottom of the lake. They're at a middle depth. Oh, just missed a hit. But they're at a middle depth as they're rising in the water column to eventually emerge as an adult. So we've raised our flies about two or three feet off the bottom to imitate this emergence. And we're getting a few hits so far. a nice trout using an intermediate sink line and a leech pattern. Tim was having some luck with coronamids because there's a good coronamid hatch. We decided with, with the higher waves sometimes it's a good... Oh, he's going under Tim's boat and my boat. Sometimes when the waves get a bit higher it's a good idea to troll with the leeches because the takes are hard to detect on a strike indicator in the big waves. Oh, this one's a nice, nice fish. Wow. Unbeknownst to many people, some of these central Alberta prairie pothole lakes have large trout, just like our BC brothers do. <laughs> oh, and that's an absolute beast. That's for this lake. <laughs> oh yeah, that is a prime fat fish. Oh, that's a good four and a half pounds for sure. Wow, what a trout. Oh, that barbless leech just flew right out. Oh, I can barely lift the net for this puppy. Wow, that's an impressive fish. I'd say about 21 inch. Fat still water trout working on a leech and a sinking line. Wow, that's a good, probably five pound fish. Give him a revival. Oh, he's gone. Wow, unbelievable way to start the day. trying to find oh that's a pig that's pushing that 26 inch mark that I hit last year on this very lake oh wow it's taking everything in the six foot to bring it in oh, oh it's huge 
Oh, that is massive. I'm in heaven here, Ed. Oh, boy. Good thing we brought these big nets. Wow. Is that a fish or what? That's quality right there. show you right now is two of our favorite springtime fishing setups. Right here to my right I've got a floating line setup with a coronamid and a strike indicator and I've also got a sinking line with a leech. Here's the setup. What I've got right here is a 9 foot 5 weight rod. You can use a 5 or 6 weight is what we prefer out here. And it's spooled up with some floating weight forward line. There's a variety of strike indicators that a fly fisherman can use out in a lake on a floating line. This is one of the newer ones out there and it's great when you're fishing deeper water with longer leaders. What it is, is a strike indicator with a little pig. This is a new indicator by Phil Rowley, a famous BC stillwater fisherman. What you do is you create a loop in it like this, slide that indicator and peg through. That way when you get a hit in deeper water and you don't want to have the indicator going into your guides, you strike like that and the indicator falls down to your flies. That's just a great technique and that's one of our favorites here on a floating line with a coronament pattern. Next we'll go to my sinking line technique. Alright, so what I got here for a sinking line setup is a 9 foot 6 weight rod with an intermediate sink line. We like to use these new clear intermediate sink lines because they're a great product out here. Now what you do is a lot of the new intermediate sink lines have leader loops attached to them or you can put one on yourself that some of the other companies produce. What you do is you tie a perfection loop into your tippet. We like to use seven pound fluorocarbon for lake situations. And you attach that to your leader loop here. At the end of it, I should also mention that we use about five or six feet of uh, tippet material on the end of your sinking line. At the end, we got our leech pattern. This is one of our favorites at this time of year. It's got purple and black flash in it. You could retrieve the fly or troll it with a sinking line and it's a great way to cover water or fish water where you know the big fish are sitting. Now let's get back to the action. Now what I'm doing right here is uh, covering a wide area of the shoal area. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with uh, what a shoal is, it's the uh, water between the shallow water and the deep water that holds the most food in the lake for the trout. Now, we've been drifting with the wind coming this way and we've been covering a lot of water. And I'm at about a nine foot depth, which is uh, where a lot of these fish are cruising. And we've covered quite a bit of water this way and chronomids, well, they're not the only thing down there. We've uh, seen leeches, damselfly nymphs, dragonfly nymphs, so we might give one of those a shot if this chronomid action slows down a little bit. Just cast out, wait for the fly to sink, do a slow hand twist retrieve. I just hooked one trolling a leech on an intermediate sink line. Me and Tim switched from coronamids because we've been getting a lot of the bigger fish on the leeches and that, so... And we found that instead of just trolling it and not giving your fly any action, we've been giving it little twitches and they've been hitting it pretty good thus far. Oh, this guy's not coming in. Here's another good spring tactic, using leeches. Leeches and coronamids have been the order of the day. 
this little big trope there. And this, this guy's spinning me around. <laughs> This is another clone. Believe it or not, Whoa. compared to that huge one Tim got earlier and some of the other ones. Whoa, 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 settle down. Here, fly flies out. Believe it or not, this one's one of the smaller ones today. good 20 inch probably three and a half four pound trout another beauty and I think right now we'll go uh, Tim's gonna tie up a big black bomber which is a very effective springtime chronomid pattern so there we go let's go hit the vice with Tim Spring is a great time to fish coronamids. So today I'm going to tie up a big black bomber. I slid my white bead head onto a number 12 Daiichi 1270 hook. I begin by wrapping some thread behind the bead head. Get it nice and secure in place. I'll cut this little tag end off here. Now that I've got it going. wire and my red wire and I'll tie them in at the back. It's vibrating. I've tied in my copper wire and my red wire. Those will be used as the red. Now I'll make my body with the black thread. You really want to use quite a bit of this stuff. Tape it up to where your uh, thorax will be. I want a nice tapered body. Thin at the back, taper it to a little bit fatter at the front. Now that I've built a slender, tapered body up to where the thorax will be, I'm going to start wrapping that copper and red wire to the front to build the red. Now we make the thorax, and there's nothing too uh, complicated about it. Just wrap a nice fat wrap of black thread until we build a nice looking thorax. It, uh, it's better to use this thread than it is to use peacock curl because peacock krill breaks off after a few fish and your fly is useless. Now that I've finished the thorax, I built it from small at the back to fatter at the front, which is a nice taper on it. I'm going to whip finish the fly and then I'll add some head cement. That adds some durability and a little bit of shine to the fly in the water. The fish will love it. Well, there you have it, the finished black bomber. The dual rib really helps it stand out in the water and the fish love it. Now let's get back to the action. Welcome back. We're fighting a hell of a big one. Just changed the color of the leech and picked it up. This one's uh, a leech anti-tide. Oh, it's got some sparkle in it and it's uh, red or purple and black. And man, are they slamming it hard. Took me on some nice runs and jumps. It's not as big as I thought. Oh, you gotta put some real power into these fish if you want to bring them in. Even on these six weights. Oh, nice fish. Oh, make sure this is the right side of my net. He's coming in. Looks to be a male. Do you think you sold on that leech yet, Tim? <laughs> oh, you kidder. Yeah, this leech is working wonders. These males are always hard to hold. Oh, come on. I'll have to get her up here so we can get a shot. Oh, just bar chrome. Look at that. Going back into that clear water. There you go.
push him on. We were telling you about this chronomid tactic, and we noticed that they were in the shallows, so we decided to beach the boats and try a little bit offshore. And this one was sitting in maybe two, three feet of water. Exciting. <laughs> He's not happy. Oh, I haven't even seen him yet. He's such a nice fish. She's using a five weight here on the floating line and we have a six weight on the sinking line. I like to have them a little stiffer for the sinking line because you want a good hook set when you have all that line out. The floating line, you uh, don't have to reach into them as much. I'm going to have to grab the net off the float boat. We don't have as many obstacles we go through this time of year. The weeds have them growing in and that's the biggest challenge in come June. We're here just at the end of May. Ooh, big bruiser female. Look at the bend on that rod. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the hook popped out. And now I'll show you guys the fish. It's a big, big, big female. Taking on that big black bomber that I'm going to show you in my segment. There she goes, no revival necessary. Uh, good fishing day out there. Oh man, unbelievable day. And I hope you people watching got to see some of our favorite spring techniques. We uh, did the leech fishing and the chronomid fishing as well. Yeah, right off that chronomid fishing. No, well, especially this time of year. They're both simple tactics and anyone can do them really. Get the technique down and, and get effective some nice techniques. Fish. Oh, you did you land a bruiser there? Oh, 25 inch female, man, she was fat. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this episode, but we'd like to thank you for watching and hope to see you out on the water in a beautiful destination somewhere in Western Canada. You're catching some of those big trout too, eh? Oh, that 20, 25 inch trout, man. This poor, uh, that's a cat. Same spot. <laughs> the, uh, we went over sinking line leech tactics, indicator chronomid fishing, and uh, happened to land a few dandies along the way. Did we ever? Oh, that 25 inch year old gave me some nightmares for a few weeks. Oh, was that ever a bruiser? Nightmare? That's <laughs> <laughs> <Just> again. <laughs> Western Sport Fishing. <laughs> <laughs>